these are really kind of magical times for publishing. And there's just a little, little hiccup that in our back garden, we have an 800 pound gorilla that completely dominates our industry. So when we started up Jelly Books just over two years ago, we were, how do we not get squashed? And so we looked at the problem and said, where is that monster weak? That lovely monster. Um, one area we said is discovery. Amazon is a place where you go to buy books, buy them cheaply. Very few people actually discover new books on Amazon. Amazon doesn't share data, so we thought, if we have a data-focused approach, can we also make that data open and pull in a lot of other people to collaborate and through a collaborative approach, maybe beat Amazon at its own game. And where possible, we also said, where we're allowed to, can we make them DRM-free and encourage people to actually share books, in particular, book samples. Let's look at discovery first. We think of discovery as just one singular thing, how people find a book, but it isn't. And in particular, we focused on what we thought were five different forms of discovery. There are more, but the five we focused on, and which were serendipitous, social, distributed, data-driven, and incentivized discovery. And I will go briefly through each of the five of how we understand them and what we are doing in that area to try to find at least a piece of the puzzle of solving it. So let's first look about uh, serendipitous discovery. We called it Project Cranberry because it was our first project, so we named it after a little and sour fruit. And what we launched almost a year ago to the day was jellybooks.com as a website that only had covers, no price, no text. You only saw pictures because it's much easier to just browse pictures. And it's an infinite scroll. You can scroll down endlessly and just look at pictures, which are book covers. And it's a responsive website, so you can do this on a smartphone, a tablet, or a gigantic super screen. It will automatically adapt. The idea is that if you just have two, three, or four minutes waiting for someone, you could just enjoy browsing as if you were dropping into a bookstore for a few minutes. And if one or two titles grab your attention, you click on them and you download the sample for later reading. It's not about trying to sell you a book, it's just trying to get you to download the sample. Because if we can get you to read the sample, we might be able to get you hooked on that book. So we followed them up with Project Blueberry, Blue as in social, and decided how we can harness that good old word of mouth so we said we focused on samples and we have all the samples as a link and we try to make it really easy and encourage people to share out those links and include those links in their tweets, in their Facebook posts, on Pinterest, everywhere. But we also took it one step further and said, if someone sees that tweet with the link, how do we actually get them to act on it? So we spent a bit of effort and some tedious effort trying to go through all the social markup language of each social network and create more engaging formats so that you always see the cover, the author, the synopsis. In this case, it's called a Twitter card. And there are similar tools within Facebook. Sometimes you have to hack them in to get the result you desire. But it's all about how do we maximize engagement. And we measure engagement as how many recipients click on the link and download the sample. Project Cherry, distributed discovery. How can we put book discovery everywhere? basically in context. So you read about something totally different that might not have anything to do with books, but you get one of the book links. So how do we put these sample tools and these sharing tools in the context of our website? In this case, it's a publisher website, so it's a fairly obvious location. And without ever having to go to Jelly Books, you can download the sample when you read about the book. But this could be a news article in The Guardian. It could be a blog, it could be anything. What we try to do is make these samples really easy to include as just little buttons for people to download and sample for later reading. Never go to Jelly Books, but we see all the data. The 
topic of the theme is letters as numbers, so let's get to the heart of this, which is for us Project Elderberry, which is book analytics and really a data-driven approach. Now you could say one of the oldest data-driven filters we have is the bestseller list. The data is what is selling the most. Obviously it's the same for everyone. So what the internet now really makes possible is that we have a data-driven approach that's unique to everybody and not driven just on mass popularity. Now we have a lot of data ourselves, but let's look at it in a wider concept. Historically we always think of a book in its printed format, be it the hardback, be it the paperback, the mass paperback. Increasingly we think about it as an ebook, but still in the terms of it is a file, a container. However, we should increasingly think about the book being just a URL, a link out there. It could be the URL to the product page on Amazon. It could be a review on Goodreads. It be, could be a quote that has been pulled out using Readmill. Henrik, an awesome Swedish entrepreneur. And these links are shared all over the internet. Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, blogs, emails. Never underestimate emails. A lot of people share books that way. And these links are quite accessible. We might not be able to see Amazon sales data, but we can see how people share links to Amazon product pages. And that tells us something about the conversations that are going on. So we can see who is actually sharing something, as in the book engaged them enough to talk about it. And we can see if somebody else acted on it. So instead of guessing what the conversation is, we use the book link as a reference. They are talking about a book, and because we have indexed all the links, we know what the ISBN is that corresponds to each link. It's of course all terribly messy. I mean, no two publishers can use Onyx data in the same way. And a lot of people outside the industry have no idea exactly how our ISBNs, Onyx, and all the other stuff works. So what we set out is we track all these data, we store it, clean it up, make it one nice uniform data format, and put it out as an open API so that basically others out there can use that data and create fabulous new ways of discovery for readers or some lovely little analytics tool or maybe just a way to visualize what's happening out there that a publisher or bookseller could use. The philosophy is that we never possibly could invent every cool way of looking data at data in-house, but if we let others and make it easy for others to do that, we might actually benefit a lot from it. Now inside Jellybooks we also use the data ourselves. We are not so altruistic to do it only for others. And our core interest is twofold. First of all, we like to understand what people are reading without asking them and without them telling us. Because if you ask someone what they are reading, they will not tell you the truth. You walk into somebody's living room, the books on the shelves is what they want you to believe they are reading. So our philosophy is, let's watch what they are really doing. So through the links and how they share and how they consume, we get an impression of maybe they are reading romance and not telling us. And so it's an entirely data-driven approach, so we ignore all ratings, we ignore what people write in reviews, and only look at what do they sample, what do they share, how do they act with stuff, and we look at that and nothing else. But by looking how people share links, we also learn something very, very interesting. It is how is influence built. Who is influential about a book? So if they talk about the book online, will others sample and buy it? And is that influence very specific? Is it only in a particular subject or genre? or geographic context. It influence can be quite limited, but within that limited area, that can be very, very influential. In reverse, if we want to target a particular reader, 
and instead of spamming them, can we use others who influence him to expose him to bugs? But that means we have to understand whose influence are they susceptible to? Whom do they trust? Whom do they, be do they believe? So if the recommendation comes from them, they will give it a try. So I am running probably a little bit ahead of my own slides here. So you wonder if we are doing so many things in an open way and in a free way, how do we actually make money in this context? Someone has to pay the bills after all. So we look at most things as something that are not terribly difficult to do when you do in a focused way and we make those for free. So any publisher can participate, submit the books to the Jelly Factory at which point we start tracking all those links. We don't track all the books in the world, that would be what, 20 million something, so we only track them where we actually have the samples and can combine wider data in the world with our own sample data. And when people develop third-party apps, it's free to do so for non-commercial use, but we also put our app market out there so that people can sell analytic solution back to publishers and we take a little cut of that. But we also take this data to inform ourselves how we can do an incentivized approach. Can we use data to sell books differently? Which means we may actually make a little commission on a sale. And let's face it, every most publishers I've talked to may talk about discovery, but it's not that interesting to them. Publishers only care about their books being discovered. So we always have to link it back to sales to get anywhere. And so we'll talk last but not least about Project Pineapple, which is about incentivized discovery. It's a pineapple because it's quite exotic, the model, to some publisher, and we have our deal button is yellow. And the way we structured it is you get an extra special discount, but only if you buy as a group with others kind of a group discount, but you have to earn your discount. So using data, we figure out whom to sell an invite in the morning for breakfast. So you can basically download the sample and read it on your way to work. In London, that's a half an hour to one hour commute, so you have plenty of time. And all our samples are the first 10% because it makes it then more relevant for people also to share it with others. And if you like that deal, you can sign up with your credit card, but we don't charge your credit card. You don't yet get the book. You really have to share the book with others. Because only if enough people buy it will you get that special discount. So sharing is absolutely essential to the purchasing process here. You can monitor how we are progressing. You don't know what the minimum is, but you see how it gets closer to the minimum. And once the minimum is reached, minimum is always set by the publisher, the deal is activated, your credit card is charged, and we send out that book at the half price discount. The deadline is 6 p.m., so there's only 12 hours to achieve it. It's important to have same-day gratification. Once the deadline is reached, new people can still join, so the laggards have a last chance to join in, but before 6 o'clock. Why 6 o'clock? because most people in London commute back home before six, so they have the complete book, can continue reading where they left off with the sample. Now in some countries we don't do six to six, Spain is nine to nine. It's just cultural differences. US, five to 11, people are much more focused before and after dinner, it's less of a commuting culture. Subtleties, but for reasons of territorial rights, we run all the deals on a country by country basis anyway. By the way, they're still under development, so we haven't launched them in the UK. They're coming very shortly, whereas the first three we already have live in the market. We don't do our own reading apps, we always send them to other people's reading apps. What happens if not enough people sign up by the six o'clock deadline? We don't even say sorry. We just say, share more the next time. <laughs> Remember, they're getting a discount. They have to work for it. So in finishing my presentation, Jonathan, uh, Jonas asked me, well, what are the conclusions? What are the recommendations? When I was in Milan, the editor of Wired Italy asked me, 
Andrew, I missed that slide where you're going to destroy Amazon like any plucky startup must clearly aspire to. I was like, why? Trade books in the UK, 27% of sales are now ebooks. In 2008, when I started negotiating publisher contracts for different startups, most publishers in the UK said, this is a US phenomenon. It will never happen here. Four years later, 27%, and Amazon arriving having a local offering that they marketed and educated consumers had more to do than anything that we have such a vibrant digital publishing market in the UK. They are an awesome company with awesome customer service. I buy a lot from them. So for us, the strategy is really not to try to kill Amazon, but to have an alternate strategy. Now, you might argue that it's a niche, but digital publishing is an in inherently global business. So that niche is a global niche for us, not a UK niche. And we're actually in three months going to launch this, roughly three months, give or take, because some publishers haven't signed yet, a Spanish version, Spanish language version with some of the biggest publishers there and launch it in Spain, US and Latin America. We've even thought about launching a Danish language version, if for no other reason than by accident of history I was born in Copenhagen. So the opportunity is we may be small targeting a smaller market than Amazon, but because it's such a big world and it's so easy to reach the world and use these this data-driven approach everywhere, we can make this niche really sizable enough for us to say this is a viable business model and something we want to do. Plus, we love doing this. We think this is actually fun and more fun than just selling books be done in 60 seconds. Thank you so much.